Welcome back everyone to Learning Repetition. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 14.74. It says, the assembly consists of two blocks A and B which have a mass of 20 kilograms and 30 kilograms respectively. De determine the speed of each block when B descends 1.5 meters. The blocks are released from rest. Neglect the mass of the pulleys and cords. All right, so what do we have over here? So we have a pulley system and we got two blocks connected, block A, block B. And we are asked to basically determine the speed of these blocks whenever uh, my block B descends 1.5 meters, okay? So in order to start these problems, what I always like to do is first write out the givens. So we're going to start with uh, the mass of block A. They're giving us that is 20 kilograms. We're also given that the mass of block B is equal to 30 kilograms. They are telling us that block B descends 1.5 meters. So I'm going to say this change in position of B is equal to 1.5 meters. I'm just going to put an arrow saying down just for descending. Uh, they're also telling us the blocks are released from rest. So I'm going to say over here, starting at rest. All right. And that's all the givens that we have. So in order to figure out this, we need to find the velocity. And as we've seen in previous chapters, is that uh, we can correlate the velocity of block A and the, uh, and the velocity of block B by knowing that the length, the total length of this cord will never change. It's always the same length if we assume that it's unstretchable, right? So we can start by that, what we learned in previous chapters. And therefore, we have to create the datums for uh, both block A and block B. So, for example, this will be my datums for my block A. So, what? why do we do this? Well, I have that the direction that my block A is going, if I'm going up, is like this. So, I'm going to say position of A, all right? And my direction of my block B starts from here all the way to here. And this will be my displacement in block B, okay? Now, assuming that going up is positive. Now, let's see what do we have. So, if we start following this core, well, we start from here. We got 1, then we got 2, and then we got 3 of the same SA. So, we're going to say that we have 3 SA plus, we're going to assume that this part of the core always stays the same. Same happens with so for these two. And then the last part that we have is SB. So plus SB should be all the length of my core. Okay. If we take a time derivative of this equation, we're going to find that three times the change in SA plus the change in position B has to be equal to zero since the length of the curve will never change. And similarly, we can say that also that the three times the velocity of A plus the velocity of B has to be equal to zero. Okay. So from these two equations, uh, we can basically say that three times the change in position in A is equal to negative the change position in B and very similar equation for my velocities we have three times the velocity of A is equal to the negative the velocity of B so having this we got um, one equation that confines what we need to look for which is the speed however we have two unknowns so we need a, a second equation and for this second equation we're going to utilize chapter 14 equation of conservation of mass, I'm sorry, conservation of energy, which is this equation 14.21, okay? So if we do that, so what we're going to have is that, uh, remember T1 is the kinetic energy, so we're going to have one half the mass times the velocity square, but in T1, in the first step, we are at rest, meaning we are starting at rest. So therefore, my velocity is equal to zero. So we have zero plus the potential energy of this one. Well, if we assume that this is my ground for saying it like that, that 
though at the beginning they're at zero ground therefore my potential energy is equal to zero as well and this should be equal to t2 well this is our kinetic energy so we have one half the mass so let's just start with block a for block a we have that the mass is equal to 20 kilograms so we got 20 multiplied by the velocity square well but the velocity of a we don't know and we're going to square then we're going to have plus one half the mass of b which is steady times the velocity of b is square okay so these two take into account our kinetic energies the second thing that we have to in take into account is our potential energies and for our potential energies is the height so we're going to start with block a what happens at block a in the second position when in the second position when block b descends well my block a will ascend so we're going to have a positive potential energy and we're going to say it, okay potential energy is the gravity times the height um, the weight of times the height and the weight is gravity which is 9.81 times the mass well for block a is 20 times the height so the height of block a we don't know it yet but we can figure it out utilizing this equation knowing that okay the if block b descends 1.5 meters therefore three times the uh, the displacement of a is equal to 1.5 so let's figure that out we can solve for the change in sa is going to be equal to negative the change in my position at b divided by 3 and we know that the position at b descended 1.5 so we got 1.5 divided by 3 and since it's descended and then a minus therefore we know that my block at a is ascending is going up okay so we have that is going to be 1.5 over 3 meters then we have to do the same thing for block b which is going to be negative since it's descending we got 9.81 multiplied by the mass which in this case is steady and the amount that it descended was 1.5 meters and it's given by the problem okay so now what do we have well we have one equation second equation and we got two unknowns so the next thing that I'm going to do is try to solve for one of my unknowns and I'm going to choose that um, basically solve for the velocity at b is equal to negative 3 times the velocity at a utilizing this equation okay and I'm going to plug this into our new equation so we will have 0 on the left side is equal to 1 half 20 times the velocity of a is squared plus 1 half times steady multiplied by well the velocity of b squared which is negative 3 velocity of a squared plus 9.81 so I'm just writing everything down haven't done anything to them so far negative 9.81 times steady times 1.5 and now we have one equation with only one unknown, which is VA. So what we can do is go ahead and solve for this equation. So 0 equals to 10 VA squared plus 15. Uh, so this is going to be 15 times 3 squared. So how much is this? This will give me a total of 135 v a is square the negative gets a square of this negative therefore it gets positive plus then 9.81 times 20 times 1.5 so just do not confuse anyone 1.5 divided by 3 that will give me 98.1 and then minus and then the other multiplication will give me a total of 441.45 okay so we can Keep reducing this equation, this will give me 145 VA squared minus 343.45. And if we solve for VA, we will have to do a square root of 343.45 
divided by 145. And when we plug this into our calculator, this will give us a total of 1.54 meters per second if we round it up to two decimal places, okay? So this is my answer for my speed of A. Now all we have to do is go ahead and say, okay, the velocity at B, we know that is negative three times the velocity at A. So if we do that, it's negative three times our 1.54. And when we plug this into our calculator, this will give me a total of negative 4.62. And this is what will be our velocity for B, okay? Just small thing. I'm gonna go back and read what the question says. It says the speed. And for the speed, they basically don't want us to, find, to, to give the direction. So I'm going to change this negative and I'm going to make it positive since we only want the magnitude for the speed. And write the units so we have a total of 4.62 meters per second squared. But we also know it's going down. So if you guys like the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.